So uh, yeah, let's get right to it, Dan. Um, what's the very first thing people should be concerned with? What's the, what's the very first mistake a lot of new cultivators make? Well, the first thing for any farmer is picking the right plant for the right space, right? So we have genetics that are appropriate for all different types of grows. For indoor grows, for outdoor grows, for coastal grows, for valley grows. You want to really research um, what genetics are going to perform well in your environment. Probably the best place to start with that is to ask your local farmers, you know. Um, are there neighboring farmers that have had great success with a certain varietal? Um, and I think that's the best way we can share as a community. But also we've got some great tips on our website. So once they've selected the proper genetics and they bring their new plants home, uh, what's one of the first mistakes some new growers make once they get these you know, clean, healthy genetics and they bring them home? Well, they say with plants generally, watering is always the, the biggest issue, right? Mm -hmm. Overwatering, they say, tends to be the easiest way to kill plants. Um, on the other hand, if you really want your plants to perform, you want to get, be able to give them the right balance of nutrients. So I really recommend starting with a high quality potting mix that's very well aerated. If it's well aerated, that means it's going to be really hard to waterlog that root ball. Um, you can get away with watering it a little bit more than you could with uh, denser uh, plant media. In addition to choosing the right media, uh, you know, what are other steps people can take to ensure that they're not overwatering? Yeah, well, overwatering is a challenge because it can often be too late by the time you recognize it. Um, you know, once you notice overwatering, it's usually because the roots are actually rotting already. So what you want to do is be really judicious in your watering program. You want to actually get out there and poke your finger in the soil. The soil should be starting to dry out by the time you water again. You don't want to keep it moist all the time. The constant moisture is not a good idea. No, the constant moisture is really bad for roots. You know, they've got to get some oxygen into those roots. Um, so you, you actually will learn as a gardener to identify um, when the plants need water because the leaves become less turgid, as we say. It just means that they start drooping a little bit, you know? They yeah. droop too much, they're wilting. Yeah. But you start to be able to recognize that stage where they're, they're not wilting yet, but they're just starting to come down a little bit. And that's the sweet spot. That's where you really want to be watering them. Fantastic. And then every time you water, you want to make sure that you're getting some good drainage out of the bottom of the pot, right? So we say water less frequently, but more deeply. They say that about 20% of the water you put into the root ball should come out as, as drainage out the bottom of the plant. Okay. That makes sure that you don't get salt buildup and the plants don't start to burn. So back to that choosing the proper media that you mentioned already earlier so that you get that correct drainage. That's right, absolutely. So important, so important. What else is there? Well, indoor growing can be a particular challenge um, because you're managing the whole plant environment. So there you wanna really be cautious to make sure that you're staying um, within tight parameters for temperature and humidity in particular. Um, I recommend that growers s invest in some kind of data logger, something that can capture the high and the low temperature in your garden. You can start off with maybe a 10 or $20 thermometer from Home Depot. You can measure your maximum and minimum temperature sure. so that you know if your garden has gotten up to 90 degrees overnight or something like that. So that's where you can really get in trouble. So give me a, give me a safe range for indoor growers, a uh, safe temperature range they should be looking to uh, maintain. Well, cannabis definitely likes a warm environment. So we really aim for about 75 to 85 degrees as the optimal temperature range. They can go a little bit above or below that, but that's really where they, that's really the sweet spot for, uh, for them to produce well. I know uh, indoor growers also sometimes have problems with uh, heat management, yeah. you know, with, with regards to temperature. Are there mm -hmm. any maybe tips you can give with, for heat management? Uh, well, it, it's a big challenge for sure. Um, I think you start with great, you know, great design is probably the most important thing. So mm -hmm. you want good ventilation through your lights. Um, an air conditioner in most areas is a have to have. Mm -hmm. They make split system air conditioners now that, that, that can be um, very effective and relatively easy to install. Um, so you just start off with a, with, a good, uh, with a good facility design to begin with and um, you should do well. Now, one thing that people don't think about as much is humidity. Sure. You know, humidity for a flower grower can be a huge challenge, lead to problems with um, powdery mildew, botrytis, a um, number of other issues. And on top of that, the plants just don't like a very humid environment. They don't grow as well. Um, so we find 
that it actually takes more um, energy to dehumidify the spaces we grow in than it does to cool the spaces, which was okay. a pretty, pretty big uh, aha for us. Are there any uh, final notes that you can uh, you want to give uh, our audience on common mistakes? Um, I'd say pests. You know, pests are one that um, that people don't think about often until yeah. it's too late. You know, so we really advise people to be very intentional about their pest management program. You know, you want to get into the garden at least once a week and be scouting for pests, you know, because it's much easier to treat those pests when there's one or two of them in your garden than it is when there's a hundred or a thousand in your garden. Try and identify that infestation at onset before it's had an opportunity to truly, you know, get in there and... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, An damage. ounce of pre prevention is worth a pound of treatment, right? Absolutely. So uh, I imagine, so we've all been on this grower's quest. We all start at the beginning. We know uh, some of us get to be as far along on the quest as you have, Dan, uh, but we all make mistakes, yeah. you know, whether it's early in our uh, growing career or even, you know, more recent. Uh, so tell us a story about one of the, you know, mistakes you've made, one of the larger mistakes you may have made. Boy, uh, there's been so many over the years. I mean, it's really, it's, that's farming, you know, every farmer, you know, it's, 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 you know, trial by a thousand cuts, so to speak. Yeah, uh, that's farming. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, for me, we always had, uh, at one of our early indoor grows, we always had problems with the um, irrigation, you know. Huh? We, we were growing reservoirs at the time, and man, managing those reservoirs was just such a chore. Um, and of course, you're a farmer, and so, you know, you're tired, you've got a hundred other things, uh, uh, going on and in, in th that you're managing. So th the thing that I would always do was um, flood the reservoirs. Oh okay. my God, you know, you show up, I'd turn on the reservoir to fill, you know, a yep. couple hundred gallon reservoir, it takes, you know, it might take an hour or something, right? Um, so you set it, you go and you do something else, you start working on the- And you forget that thing's on. <laughs> you forget that thing's on and pretty soon you got a flood coming out the building, you know? <laughs> Hopefully you don't have someone downstairs because, oh man, that's real trouble. Sure. Um, but that was uh, that was always a big one. But even, even once you got it filled, then you've got, um, then you've got all of these um, uh, all of these cultural concerns, right? Like you want to make sure there's not bacteria growing in your reservoir. You know, one thing people don't think about is that um, your reservoir needs to be aerated, right? If you just let your reservoir sit there, it becomes stale, and then the bacteria grow. And most importantly, the plants don't like it if there's not enough oxygen in the in the water. It's stagnant water. Stagnant water. It just it does not. Plants do not like stagnant water. So you have to remember. I want to hear more about you flooding out your neighbors. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you know, shop vac was our was our tool of choice, right? Okay. <laughs> and we had a lot of them, but, uh, absolutely. To, to this day, we still flood all the time, right? But, sure. But um, yeah, we've we've tried to get we've learned a little bit over the years how to how to prevent it. Thanks so much, 